All right. Starting off the fresh new video on uh, another cleaver build for uh, Mr. Uh, what's it called? Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm here to do a, a build, another cleaver um, build for uh, some, uh, I guess a <laughs> shit. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> uh, all right, I can't. I see every time I, th I think of my brother's my face, I just start laughing. I don't know why, but I just feel like he's looking at me. Um, here's what we got today. I'm making another cleaver. My brother requested for, uh, I guess somebody he works with. They in the military. And, um, uh, I guess this, this one's for, uh, <laughs> damn, can't remember. Shit. Let me write it down. All right. Well, I'm back. Got another cleaver build. I uh, got requested from my brother. I guess he's give, gonna get it, give it to a partner to, where he works at, which he's a you know military. You know, he's there everywhere. So um, this build's kind of gonna be like the same cleaver I built him in my past video, but I might put a different little touch to it, a little curviness to it or something. Um, this is for uh, his partner. Bill Big Gun Sullivan. I had to write it down on a piece of paper because I kept, kept freaking uh, forgetting it. But, uh, Bill, this was going to be for you when I get done. Um, I'm going to do the best I can with it. Right now, so this is a regular llama blade. Uh, it's all i got to work with. Uh, I'm going to do some forging on it. i got to compress the metal down. You see these little areas here? I'm going to compress them down so it'll be f flat in there so to, this won't be in here just crap I'm not gonna cut it out I'm just gonna compress it down wherever I do my blade at but this side that's gonna cut out the handle and all that stuff all this junk ain't I just, we don't have a lot of metal left over so so what I'm gonna do now is just, uh, I'm gonna sand this down a little bit draw my image on here of the cleaver and uh, cut it out, do some forging on the profile, then the rest is just grinding and heat treating and putting it all together. So this is part one for today, is the layout. Um, I don't know if it's gonna get there by Christmas. I had a late start, got a lot of transportation issues right now with my work, getting home. So I don't get home until like almost seven o'clock. But uh, I try my best to get it done, but if it's not there by Christmas, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get to you guys, so don't worry. All right, let's give it to work. I made I made this knife out, out of a llama blade also. Um, a couple of years ago, probably, probably made this in 2014. It's a good chopper. Got a good bevel on it. This is my best, probably one of my best ones. I still use today. That's the center of the lawnmower. Or hooks at. But it does pretty damn good. It sliced through about an inch, inch of um, tree limb, one hit. So, so I know I can make this a good chopper for you if you're just using it for your home inside your house not chopping on no you know some limbs or something like that
I probably wound up making a case like this for it. I don't have any more leather. I made a little small little case for my brother. Um, out of old tool belt. Uh, but these are Kydex. So I might make one for your cleaver to, to slide into. It's, it's plastic, but it, it molds in the heat. And you can make a, a good uh, belt loop. Or I, I've tried to put one on the back, but it didn't do too great for me. But you can buy stuff to go on the back. Or just keep it in a, in, a, in a sheath like I got this one and just pull it out when you... Oh, almost got me. It did get me. Look at that. That's how sharp I'm telling you the shits are. I'm not joking. Just barely touched me. Well, we got the profile cut out. I'm still gonna bend, when I forge it, I'm gonna bend this handle up some. It's kind of like a damn uh, shooting a gun or something. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna forge it out and I'm gonna bend it back so you can put your finger in there. So and it's like a little ring. If I can do it, if I can, I'll just cut it off. But I'm gonna straighten that out pull this out a little bit you know forge it out and just turn it like this so it'll be like a you know, little comfortable a firm grip little ring you can put your ring your finger in the index finger, index finger in there and uh chop away with comfort on your favorite vegetables or whatever um the steel even though it's industrial type lawnmower blade steel you know, there are most of them are a lot of unknown steels, so they're they're medium carbon. Well, actually, this thing had a lot of a lot of spark in it, so it has some decent carbon in there. But they're they're designed to take the impact for 
you know, cutting, cutting grass, cutting big old chunks of sticks, running over rock. They're, de they're designed to take the impact. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to harden the whole thing. When I do the hardening process, I'm just going to harden up to here and down because the blade is what you really want to harden and the top is what you want to, to take the impact of whatever you're going to chop. Um, again, it's, you know, it's from unknown steel. So I wouldn't, I mean, I've seen cleavers I have made in the past chop through some bone. Uh, I did a test on my brothers chopping through some old cow bone, but you know, that's, I'm not, that's not guaranteed on all bones. You know, that's, I know it's a cow bone, but it's not a fresh cow bone. That cow bone's probably been sitting out for a while. You kind of shattered when I hit it. And I also did a, a test on some good oak. The handle itself, I te chopped it on. On the last test with my brother's um, cleaver was on some good oak, but it was aged oak. But still, it, it held its edge and did pretty well. I wouldn't suggest going and chopping on any other metal surfaces because it's going to it's going to probably take a toll on your edge anyway i wouldn't go trying to chop a nail in half or something like that yeah it's going to dent it's going to dent it up but i'm going to do the best i can on the harden but again it's going to feel comfortable to hand it already feels good in my hand feel like you got you got a you got a piece of meat in your hand you got a piece of steel in your hand so if you can just imagine this curling down fitting with that finger i'm not sure how big your finger is so i'm going to make it a little wider than mine just to just to come out a little ways and trying to not i'm making it where it won't affect it's going to be skinny enough so it won't affect your other fingers in a way and so i'm gonna go ahead and get the forging get the profile out some and tomorrow when i get home i'll start on the you know hole drillings and all that stuff.
about 3,000 years later, I got the cores out the edge. The whole edge that I had on there is gone now. So it's still got a thickness. I got a straight as I can get it. I'm looking at it now. I still think I've got a little bow in it. So the edge is gone straight as I can get it. I believe I double check on it. But I still got it. I'm gonna grind that edge right here. I got a little rag on it from the cut I did. Uh, put a little bubble in there. But again, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna see how this turns out right here. So it can be like kind of like a guard. Make your finger instead of being a coming out like I planned on it, it'll just be right there against your finger. So it, Gonna be slipping up on nothing. Um, I'll do a test on it when I get done, also. So, see what happens. So, that can, that's the forging process. Now, the rest is just doing the doctoring up, the file work, hole drilling, handle making. Then, I temper it. Well, I'll temper it before I put the handle on there, but. I do all that tempering and hardening before I do the the bevel. Then you know everything else comes along with it. So.